Hey guys, what's up? I Zach the Tron here from One Hive Gazette, here with the next war recap video. And this is the arranged war we had over the weekend while I was out of town. My trip was great, by the way. Uh, thanks for uh, everyone wishing me a nice trip in the comments of the, uh, the video a few days back. I appreciate that. Uh, so anyway, we're going to take a look at some of these attacks. We actually had two very good wars in Genesis. This one arranged war. Then we got a random match against FYSB, which was also a great war, and a bunch of attacks from both wars to show. So I'm going to get to a lot of the attacks and different war recaps and base destruction videos, all that good stuff. And also, I know that you guys want to see another Town Hall 9 live base build video. So I'm going to you know, make sure I get an account uh, to do that with, and uh, I should have that video you know, coming up sometime in the near future, because I know a lot of you guys are trying to uh, to defend against, you know, Town Hall 9 attacks, because it's still something that's worth, you know, trying to do. You can build a, a good Town Hall 9 base. So anyway, speaking of Town Hall 9 bases, um, as far as what North Faction did to our bases, you can see uh, the 11s, all two stars except for Anthony, got a few Town Hall 10 three stars, but the Town Hall 9 bases actually did hold up fairly well. Uh, with Shrek there, 007, uh, Sagart, um, Heinzenberg, yeah, I mean, Richie, all these guys uh, holding up very well against their uh, attacks. So great job to our nines, especially with those bases, uh, which is why I want to bring you guys some base building info uh, to help you guys, you know, have that level of success when you're in these kind of good wars. Um, but anyway, as far as what we did to their bases, some Town Hall 11 three stars, which we'll look at and uh, some Town Hall 10 three stars also, and all the nines cleaned up. Um, and as we take a look at the first Town Hall 11 three star, I mean, I did say a while back, or not a while back, pretty recently, that Town Hall 11 actually is in, you know, somewhat of a balance. And I think people tend to miss, uh, interpret the, the dip attacks as being unbalanced. I mean, at any time you're going down a Town Hall level to attack, whether it's a Town Hall 10 going down to a Town Hall 9 uh, or an 11 going down to a 10, it's not going to be balanced. But the point is, I think Town Hall 11 versus Town Hall 11 isn't that far from being balanced. And uh, as we take a look at this attack by Trigger Man, you can see even against a base with completely maxed out defense, that's the new level 13 Archer Tower. I think that's level 13 and the level 13 Cannon. All those uh, high level defenses, he does this awesome Queen Charge with the... Uh, the healers, the Grand Warden, and it's so powerful because the Warden gives that buff. He also does a little bit of damage, and uh, the healers are able to keep the Queen up pretty well. And you also have that Royal Tomb, which people are starting to use more and more on the Queen instead of like on the Miners or the Bowlers or whatever. But using that on the Queen, letting her get in deep into the base, and you can see right here, he has the Queen's ability. He'll pop that in just a moment. Uh, the King's making his way along the outside. I'm not sure what the king's deal was, but he's at least tanking for the uh, the eagle. But the queen gets in there, and he, she gets the eagle, which is in the center of the base. So an awesome queen charge. She gets an inferno and an eagle, and you can see she's still at half health with that warden backing her up. So the king kind of makes his way around the outside and starts to peter out. But the miners are in the base, and uh, they're going straight for that last inferno, which is really the last threat of this base, because once the eagle's down... Uh, there's just the Infernos. One of the Infernos was taken out by the Queen. The second one goes down right here. Um, and you can see that those level 4 Miners are pretty tanky, especially when they get that bonus from the heal. Uh, they'll take out that Inferno right there. A few go flying this, this Spring Trap, uh, but for the most part, still has a huge group. Has that next heal, great placement uh, on the Giant Bomb, the Wizard Towers. That was all going down. A few Bowlers, actually, to kind of, I guess, start taking out Trash and get the extra second bounce to get some more damage going inside of the base. But the miners are doing a great job. The warden's kind of peeled off onto them. So he's giving them the health boost. And the queen is still going strong. Got great investment for like the two rages I think that he used on her. Because she, like I said, got all the way into that base. So people are starting to use kind of that the uh, queen warden convoy a lot more to get into that base. And get, you know, even the eagle and an inferno plus the queen. A huge chunk of the base taken out. Uh, because the Warden is powerful when he's paired up with the Queen on the Queen Walk. It's something to think about. So the healers go over and get on the Miners because the Queen finally goes down. So they're pretty much back to full health. A few bowlers to help out. Enough time to get the job done. Awesome attract, attack to trigger, man. Um, I think this is just the first of many we're going to see at Town Hall 11. 
Uh, some people are starting to come up with some great stuff to three-star uh, some of these top bases. And speaking of that, another good transition uh, segue into this next Town Hall 11 three-star, Captain Cold. I wanted to show both of these uh, Town Hall 11 three-stars because it's just not something we see that much. So I think it's worth putting in this recap because uh, we see so many Town Hall 10 three-stars nowadays. The Town Hall 11 is kind of the new frontier for three-star attacks, and we're starting to see more and more of it. Um, especially as Genesis is going heavier, we have more Town Hall 11s in our clan now, more people experimenting, coming up with great stuff. Really awesome to see the progression go on inside our clan. So this nice little funnel right there for the bowlers sends all those guys in. And even though this base has the spread out infernos, everything's kind of compact and uh, there's access to pretty much the entire base with a couple jumps. So uh, it kind of favors that second jump towards the bottom. So you can see as everything moves in with the rages, the warden's ability, uh, everything's pretty much staying up at this point. It goes down there, gets that bottom Inferno first, and kind of ignores that top Inferno. And this is something that I think may or may not be intentional. It's just a benefit of the attack, is that when everything kind of peels off in one way, if that Inferno was off to the side like it is, which you see on these anti-three-star bases, things kind of have a chance to reach full health, the healers to get on everything, get them back to full health. And I think that really benefits the troops in a way, having this little time away from the Inferno Tower to get uh, the health back because these, this spread out point defense, even though it is a compact base, is really not doing much to his troops. The golems are doing the tanking for the most part and uh, things are kind of regaining their strength, getting ready for one final push in the direction of the Inferno and the group of point defense up in the right hand corner there. So things kind of making their way along. They're gonna get through that wall right there. Uh, the warden staying very central, you know, making sure all the troops get the health boost um, from his radius. So the queen goes in right there along with some bowlers to take out these defenses. And really that inferno isn't that dangerous unless there's other point defense near it. And by the time the inferno becomes a factor, uh, really all the point defense has gone down. The king is still, you know, at most of his health, has a rage left over as well. The queen's ability just uh, worked out great and uh, wasn't that, at least didn't appear to be that much of a technical attack. Just sending in those bowlers, making sure the funnel was sound and it worked out great, has the queen's ability plus that rage. So the king's gonna go down right there along with that bowler, but the uh, co the common little end game uh, piece you see right there, the queen and the warden, uh, which tend to stay alive so long in these attacks, is what's gonna get the three star form right here. So pops that queen's ability, uh, she just has that Tesla to take out. She'll go around the smart way and get that. I'm not sure why the warden doesn't just hop up and get that, because he can jump walls. But I guess he's so much of a support troop, he helps the queen take out that wall because he knows she does all the damage. Uh, so anyway, nice attack to Captain Cold. Um, I, I had to cut down the number of attacks because I originally I had a ton I wanted to show from this war. But uh, I have to limit it to some extent or else this recap will take forever. So we're going to go on to some Town Hall 10 attacks. Uh, just the best ones I could find in this war. We're looking at Zedekus taking on a very high level base. Looks to be pretty much max besides a few archer towers. Um, yeah, some of the point defense isn't quite there, but has the walls, has the heroes, the infernos. Uh, most of the stuff is maxed out besides a few wizard towers also. Uh, so anyway, comes in with some baby dragons just for some funneling, uh, getting all that taken care of. And then he has kind of a minor bowler combo queued up, uh, which we still see quite a bit at Town Hall 10. Uh, great value for that one baby dragon gets the entire uh, Town Hall taken out which is important for the funnel right there. Also gets the barracks, so awesome stuff there. Wall breakers, that one golem in. Uh, here comes the king, the queen backing that up. Now the bowlers making their way in. Uh, does a pretty good job funneling in the bowlers. The king actually goes for a wall right here, which I thought was kind of weird because uh, it seemed like everything else was much closer to, uh, to just to enter the base. But for whatever reason, he's on the wall. Uh, but right there, he reroutes back onto the base. Kind of a weird little uh, occurrence right there, but he's in the base. He'll help out in that enemy queen uh, with the jump spell there. Already sends in those miners, I like that. Get those in early, uh, let the troops kind of coexist inside the base. Pops the queen's ability, get the inferno taken out before it does too much damage to the miners. And uh, they're gonna make their way through the base, really not taking a whole lot of damage and staying underground. That double uh, giant bomb set goes off, but I don't think that's quite enough to kill the miners at this point. I think the level two miners can survive that double giant bomb set. I'm pretty sure, yeah, I, I've seen a few attacks. Uh, so especially when they go underground, they can avoid some of that damage. 
And uh, you can see all his troops are pretty much down right here. Has that one more baby dragon to keep those miners inside the base because it's so important that they get that inferno. Now the main group is going to go around the inferno unfortunately, but a few miners that went off to the other side are going to target that inferno, get right in there, and because nothing else is really targeting them, they'll be able to slowly hack away at the inferno, finally getting it down, and uh, that's pretty much going to seal the deal for this attack. Has a big group still left out to take out just a few defenses, so awesome attack to Zedekiss, getting the three star on uh, one of their top Town Hall 10 bases, I believe. So we'll keep moving and take a look at, I think we're on to some Town Hall 9s. We had some awesome Town Hall 9 attacks. I just showed the uh, the ones I thought were the coolest, some different stuff that we don't see. One of, the, one of these attacks was like, I have never seen this before, um, or at least in a while. It's kind of a new variation. Uh, so let me go ahead and get to number 20. This was uh, Nate here, and he came in with kind of a, uh, a La Luna attack. You see he has the queen charge queued up right there in that nice little, uh, or whatever you call it, um, opening in the base, I guess. Yeah, opening in the base, you can call it, uh, right at the bottom there. He's going to allow his queen just to enter on in. There is a lot of HP, which is trying to, I guess, discourage the kind of the queen charge, but he'll just let his queen sit back, uh, take things out. I guess he could have dropped in a wizard to help out maybe. But the level 30 queen, either way, does quite a bit of damage. Drops down that rage, and I'm not sure if that was just to boost the damage, because he, you'll see he uses a, like a lot of rages, uh, where he, the queen really didn't need it in terms of health. It does buff up her damage a little bit, but right here, another rage will go down, and he'll also use the, uh, the ability because of that P.E.K.K.A. So two rages in the ability right off the bat. You might think that's a little bit wasteful, but it's actually... It works out fine for the attack because the queen takes out the P.E.K.K.A., gets in there, gets the enemy queen. The Rage is still helping out the healers a little bit that he dropped uh, a little earlier in the attack. Comes in here with the uh, Lava Hound part of the attack. I like how uh, far out that haste spell was. Maybe a little bit too far out, but at least gets the balloons going uh, to that first defense, which is the most important. Getting them in there quickly and uh, going to start working his way around the base counterclockwise. Has quite a few minions just to help with cleanup. But the main thing is how deep the queen gets into this base here uh, because she's really able to help out, especially with cleanup and uh, getting a few more defenses on the way. So right here, um, that area is really high in DPS as far as air troops go. So the Lava Hound is doing quite a bit of tanking. It's going uh, down pretty quickly. But the balloons are already in there. Great placement on that last haste uh, to help counter that air sweeper. They're going to get in there, get that taken out. A few more defenses, has one nice back end balloon to help deal with that wizard tower, uh, let it avoid the big cluster of balloons. So things are starting to go down a little bit uh, in terms of his balloons, but he has the queen, he has quite a few cleanup troops, and those last few loons will get in there and take out the defenses. Awesome attack to Nate, getting the three star. Uh, nice little air attack there. All right, uh, we have three more attacks to show. I'm gonna try to just go through these. Uh, getting a little bit late here, but uh, whatever. Gonna be a bit of a long video, but a ton of attacks to show. And uh, this is just the beginning of some of the stuff we saw in this war. This was the attack I was talking about that was kind of unique. I uh, haven't seen a whole lot of this before. Five golems and bowlers. So you might think of a um, a golem avalanche or a surgical go we or whatever we used to call it when people did this against dead zone bases. Kind of a similar concept, but not really. Similar troops, but um, different attack. You can see he has two jumps, two rages, and he's just going to basically enter the base right here and let those golems walk all the way in different directions, get out there, do tanking, let the high-level heroes, or not even high-level, only 20-20, but let those heroes get in there and uh, use the rages along with the bowlers. He's getting so much value for the bowlers because pretty much every one of their, their throws will get two hits uh, considering how compact this base is. That nice jump in the middle lets those golems extend to pretty much every side of the base. A very nice split on those golems. And then has a few hogs just to flank the uh, defenses. The queen is on a golem, luckily, so she's not going to take out too many of the bowlers. Uh, still has his own queen up with her ability. And uh, because so much of the DPS was right in that middle part of the base there, by getting the golems and the bowlers in there so fast and having them storm through so quickly, they were able to take out... Uh, the base pretty quickly without having taken too much damage themselves. So he has quite a few troops left up uh, once all the defenses have, have fallen. And you can see he doesn't even have to get that deep into the base 
before everything's been taken out because the bowlers can reach over the one wall and there wasn't a whole lot of defenses on that back little uh, compartment there. So uh, this base is already toast. Awesome attack there, kind of a nice innovative thing from Warlord, getting the three star. We'll go ahead and fast forward through the last 40 seconds or so because it's just clean up on some of these high HP buildings. Uh, so anyway, as those little kings there hold hands, this is gonna be a three star, uh, nice attack. Let's take a look at, what do we have? Two more Town Hall, no, one more Town Hall 9. And then I have a bonus Town Hall 8, just because we had some Town Hall 8s in this war, one to show a few of those. Uh, but this is one more attack by Warlord. He brought two really nice attacks, so I thought I'd show them. Uh, this is a Baby Dragon Valk combo here. Uh, I think it's called like, uh, I forget the name. People have weird names for these nowadays. Um, I just call it, you know, Baby, Dra Baby, uh, Baby Dragon Valk attack, whatever. Uh, it's kind of a duo combo here with these two different troops and a few minions to help out on some funneling. But uh, he'll drop in those baby dragons uh, and actually a Valk there to create the funnel. He's going to go pretty much north to south on this base. And you wouldn't think of this kind of attack because it's kind of dead zone in the middle besides that one air sweeper. So you'd think the Valks would kind of go around the outside uh, considering he doesn't have any jumps either. But they just kind of go through the base uh, pretty much down to that queen compartment on a straight path. So kind of interesting how that worked out. Has the bowlers as well in the CC to give the attack a little bit of range besides just the queen. Uh, so everything moving their way through, the Valks making their way uh, to one side, the bowlers kind of going to the other. But right here, they go over to that air sweeper. And I'm not sure how planned this was because it's how, how much really can you predict the pathing on these troops without any jumps or anything. Uh, but one way or another, they make their way to the bottom here, has the rages, the heals uh, to deal with the CC troops, the poisons. Everything making their way through that king's already go, going over there and taking out some of the heroes along with the Valks. And now he's starting to sprinkle in the baby dragons around the outside of the base. Just one air defense left up. And that actually should go down to the queen unless she goes down too far south here. She might miss it, it looks like. Uh, I've, watched, I've watched a lot of attacks today and it's getting late. But uh, anyway, not a whole lot of defenses left up besides that and has a heal spell uh, left up as well. So he's just gonna let everything start to develop right here. The queen should target that uh, air defense as soon as the town hall goes down and she does, making this attack pretty much over. Last few baby dragons go in, we'll even go times two, just for my sake to speed it up uh, before I run out of breath here. So anyway, nice attack to Warlord. Two awesome attacks, getting the six star war. Really helped out on our town hall nines. Let's take a look at one town hall eight attack. Then we'll wrap this thing up. All right, here's the bonus attack. What is it? 39 uh, on a bender. Coming in here, taking out this base. base just uh, I can't even talk anymore. Last attack of this uh, war recap. We're about 18, 22 in. Uh, always a struggle at this point, especially coming back from vacation. But I wanted to record this one before the attacks disappear because it's two wars back at this point. So anyway, uh, has the poison for the CC troops, setting those hogs in, trying to get that double giant bomb set uh, taken care of. You can see that air defense is just left up, so that must have been a tough one. But anyway, the baby dragon goes down just to the lingering poison effect, sends in one more hog. I love the placement, letting it target that air defense directly. Right there, everything's down. It goes ahead and triggers that double giant bomb set. This might have been a cleanup attack. I probably should have checked. I assume it was, considering how much of an investment he made to get that double giant bomb set neutralized. So uh, now that that's down, he's confident pretty much that there's going to be no more double sets because he only has three bombs at Town Hall 8. Just has to make sure he heals over the third one, which he does right there. Still has one more heal left. And the poison for the skellies and the king, making sure to heal those hogs early. Uh, while well, he still has big groups of them left up. Still has his CC up also. I assume that has max hogs in it, along with the king making his way around the outside, plus his ability. So sends in these last few hogs at the bottom here. Everything's starting to go down. Just a few wizard towers left up, really, plus that king. So just a matter of time as these hogs make their way around. They are starting to thin out a little bit. Uh, there's the CC, a witch and a baby dragon. <laughs> I'm not sure what that was. I actually didn't even watch this full attack because I'm like, all right, it's a Town Hall 8 attack. How complicated can it be? It looks like I'm in for a surprise here. 
because the uh, little cleanup squad or whatever he sends in is a witch and a baby dragon. I'm not sure how. I don't, I don't even know. Maybe this base was already three star or something and he was coming in kind of as a practice or something. I honestly don't know. I didn't look into this that much. I just thought I'd show a Town Hall 8 attack for you guys. So I do apologize to the Town Hall 8s out there if I'm not showing the most quality attack. But still, it was a pretty good attack. And you can kind of say that he swagged his CC in a way because this isn't making that much of a difference. Although it is helping out with cleanup and that baby dragon should actually take out the king and stuff, which does help out quite a bit. So interesting attack. That's all I can say, really. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the war recap. I'm definitely happy to be back here recording. I did have a good time, like I said. I'm only, uh, I'm underage, so I wasn't doing a whole lot in Vegas, but I had some fun and uh, was able to upload pretty much every day, as I said, I was hoping to. So hopefully you guys liked the videos the last few days, had some live attacks, uh, mini tips, all that good stuff for you guys. So in the next few days, I'm going to have a lot of this, these two wars uh, being shown, the, this one, then the one against FYSB, because there were some awesome attacks on some good bases. I never want to pass up the chance to show those. But on that same note, I am going to try to do a Town Hall 9 base build, uh, as you guys have been requesting, along with some other defensive videos, all that kind of stuff. So stay tuned. I'm going to be coming out with some more stuff later this week, and I'll see you guys then. Thanks for watching. Bye, Sectatron out.